Let's learn how to use a knot to test your smart contract. Usually when you write a test, you're testing against some scenarios that you set up. You will write some code to set up your contract to be in a certain state. And then call some functions and afterwards you check that the state is what you expect it to be. However, using a knot, you can write some tests where something should always be true. This is called an invariant. A knot will randomly call functions inside your contract and try to break this invariant. Using a kidna, you might be able to find some bugs that are otherwise difficult to find. We'll start with a simple example. To write some tests in a kidna, we'll need to create a contract. So I'll say contract, I'll name this test counter. The contract that we're going to be testing for this example is the counter contract. We have a state variable called count and we have two functions, inc to increment the count and dec to decrement the count. So this contract that we're testing, test counter, is going to inherit the counter contract so that it can now will be able to call all of these functions. The first test that we'll write is a very simple test, a test that will always pass. So we'll type function, and all of the tests in echidna must be prefixed with echidna underscore and the name of the test. We'll name this test pass. This function must be public, view, and it must return a boolean. So it returns boolean. We'll keep this test very simple and return true. So when we execute the test in Echidna, Echidna will call these functions inside the counter contract, the function inc, in dec, and random orders, and then it will call the function Echidna test passes. Since we're returning true, the test will always pass. To run the test in Echidna, we'll use Docker. We'll load our code into Docker and then use Echidna to execute the test. So we'll say docker run dash it. After we execute the Docker, we don't want to keep the image. So we'll say dash dash rm. And we'll load the code by saying dash b load the current directory into the folder slash code. The Docker image that we need to download is called trail of bits slash if security toolbox. Once we're inside Docker, we need to go to slash code. If we list the content of this folder, you can see that we have a bunch of contracts and the one that we're gonna be testing today is test echidna.sol. To run the test, we'll type echidna-test. The contract that we're testing is test echidna.sol. Now inside this contract, notice that we have two contracts, contract counter and contract test counter. We want to tell Kidnap that we want to test this contract, test counter. So back inside the terminal, we'll say that by saying dash dash contract test counter, and then hit enter. I compile the contract with Solidity 0.8.10, but Echidna is a little bit buggy with Solidity 0.8.10. So we'll change this to 0.8.9. So back inside the contract, I'll change 0.8.10 to 0.8.9, save it, and then back inside Docker, we'll switch our Solidity compiler, make sure that it is equal to 0.8.9. We can do that by typing sulk dash dash version, and it is equal to 0.8.9. So we'll run the test again by executing this command. Notice that the test ran for 50,000 times and the test passed. What Echidna did was it ran some functions from the counter contract. It called the function inc and dec and some random sequence. After it called some functions inside the counter contract, at the end of the test, it will call this function, Echidna test pass, and it will check the condition inside here. If it returns true, then the test passes, and if it returns false, then the test fails. Here our test is very simple and it returns true, so all of our tests passed. To show you an example of a test failing, we can do something similar. So we'll copy this test, and then we'll return false. So all of the test cases when it cannot call this function, it cannot test fails, should fail. Back inside Docker, I'll exit this screen by hitting Control C, and then we'll run the command again. And this time, instead of running the test 50,000 times, for this example, I'll just run it 500 times by typing dash dash test limit 500. 
notice that the first test is still passing and the second test is failing. Next, let's write a test that is a little bit more practical. We'll write a test to check that the count is always equal to or less than 5. Obviously, if you call the function in more than 5 times, then the test will fail. So we expect the test that we're going to write to fail after it cannot calls the function inc more than five times. So I'll copy this test and then we'll name this test it cannot test count. And the condition that we're going to check is that the state variable count is always less than or equal to five. Inside the terminal, we'll run the test again. And notice that Echidna was smart enough to call the ink function more than five times. It called it six times, and our condition that the count must be less than or equal to five failed. Next, I'm going to show you how to use Echidna to test assertion. Unlike the example above where it cannot call these functions inside the counter contract, I'm going to call these Echidna test functions to check the conditions. Echidna can also check for assertions. In this case, Echidna will call this function test assert with some random inputs, and if the assertion fails, then Echidna will say that the test failed. Now, Echidna for Solidity 0.8 is a little bit buggy, and this test does not work with Solidity 0.8. So we need to change Solidity 0.8 to Solidity 0.7. And then we'll run this test. So inside the terminal, I'll exit the last test by hitting Control c I'll clear the terminal, and to use echidna to test assertion, we'll type echidna-test, the name of the file that we're testing, test echidna.sol contract is test assert, and to check for assertion, we'll need to pass the flag dash dash check assert. I forgot to switch to solidity 0.7, so we'll do that right now by typing sulk select. We'll go with solidity 0.7.6 and we'll check that the solidity version has switched over to 0.7.6 by typing sulk dash dash version. And now we're running solidity 0.7.6 and then we'll execute this test command again. Our test failed as expected and the counter example that Echidna gave us. So the example where the test fail is it called test assert with the input 10. Inside our contract, our assertion is that the input should be less than 10. And Echidna was able to find that if we put in 10 inside here, then this assertion fails. Let's take a look at a little bit more complex example. Here I have a function called abs, which will give the absolute value of the difference between x and y. If x is greater than or equal to y, it subtracts x minus y. Otherwise, y is greater than x, so it returns y minus x. We'll write a function called test abs. It's going to take in two inputs, u int x and u int y. These two inputs will be randomly fed by echidna. This function will be external. We'll get the value by calling abs by saying u int z is equal to abs of x y, and then we will run some assertions. If x is greater than or equal to y, then subtracting x from minus y, which returns z, then we should assert that z should be less than or equal to x. Otherwise, y is greater than x, so we will assert that z is less than or equal to y. Now don't worry if this logic doesn't make sense to you. Here I'm just showing you that you can write some complex code inside here and write some bunch of assertions and using Echidna you'll be able to test this function out. So back inside Docker I'll exit this test, clear the terminal, and then we'll run the test again. And our test passed. So that was some examples of how to use Echidna to test your smart contract. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more complex examples of testing with Echidna.